The last time Yamaha won the Premier Class Championship was in 1992. It wasn't the best bike then, and it isn't in 2004. But in 1992, Yamaha had Wayne Rainey, and now they have Valentino Rossi. Can you imagine that phone call or that meeting in the paddock with his manager? Listen, Mr. Yamaha, we, we've got this great idea. Are, are you interested? Can you imagine how that Yamaha guy felt? The best man, by far, on not quite the best motorbike. Great recipe. With my big change, all uh, become more uh, interesting, especially for me. If he can come and do the same thing on the Yamaha, he'll be one step closer to God. But it's a big step. The last person to win consecutive championships on different makes of motorcycle was Eddie Lawson, who won on a Yamaha in 1988 and a Honda in 89. I don't know why Rossi wanted to do that, I have no idea, but for me, I think our team, we kind of run its course, and uh, everyone was a little bit burnt out, and uh, so was I, and, and Irv wanted to do something, and I really wanted to work with Irv. I hope he does it. I'd love to see Yamaha out there winning, and uh, yeah, he, he seems like a good kid. I'd like to see him win. Lawson left Yamaha to work with legendary engineer Irv Kanemoto at Honda. Rossi has taken his crew chief and most of his crew with him. Uh, we were getting to a situation where we were rolling over the championships pretty much as we did with Big Doon. And uh, I'd been there before. The Valentino made a decision to come elsewhere and we discussed keeping the band together, so to speak. Yamaha had a lot of ideas that they felt would work. A lot of what we want is only now starting to filter into the bike, but what they had was obviously uh, well researched. Valentino is helping a lot our engineer job because uh, he's so clear on technical analysis and if uh, he goes out on a bike and he has uh, five problems, he selects the problems and he, he starts to talk to you about two or three and then when you, you fix it, the first two, then he start to, to, to explain the fourth and the fifth. So he's, he's selective. He's very sensitive, he decides priority, and it's able to go step by step. The first people to get a good look at Rossi on the Yamaha are his fellow racers, including new MotoGP riders Shane Byrne and Neil Hodgson. Funnily enough, I followed Valentino for a lap this morning. He went out and ran into a few corners, pretty much right out to the edge of the track. And I thought, blimey, where's he going? He must have about braked himself. And the next thing you know, he like turns the thing and just shoots off at about 5,000 miles an hour and disappears into the sunset. You follow him and he's just on the, a line that you'd like to be on, but for whatever reason, you can't get on it. You feel like you're putting in 100% effort. He looks like he's putting in about 20. You know, it just looks effortless. And then he's pulling away and he's gone, you know, and you're like, damn. The bike is much less important than the rider. It's proven what I've been saying for years, that they just need a rider. He doesn't look strong. He doesn't look particularly fit. You wouldn't look at him and think, oh, he looks like an athlete. He looks like a skinny guy who probably likes a cigarette and has a few beers. We're all blessed with a certain amount of natural ability. And he's obviously got more than everybody else. Is a good champion. He's able to fight. He's able to winning. Is I think he's a great rival for me. I don't have so much respect for other side, other thing, but uh, for on the track, I think he's a very high quality, you know. And uh, I think he will be the main uh, rival. South Africa. April 18th, 2004. First race of the season. 28 laps at the absolute limit. Every man for himself. We do something more uh, dangerous, very dangerous. I think uh, need to stay always concentrated and uh, don't, don't try too hard because uh, with the bike is dangerous. For win, at the end, you risk, but uh, it's necessary you risk when uh, you need to risk.